Yes, you're right, this is not a MacBook. This is my old Lenovo Legion laptop. This is a macOS clone, written in Angular. In this video, we're gonna create a login screen. Stay tuned. As we only created a login component as a placeholder in the previous video, we'll start this video by adding it to the core module. We start with defining a div with a class login screen. Then we go to the SAS file and start adding the styles. We add a background image from assets, images, desktop, background, JPG. We want to add the size of cover. We don't want it to repeat. And the position should be centered. Also, we want it to take the full height of the window. Please don't forget to add a slash before the assets. If we hit save and go back to the browser, we see our Monterey background. We continue by adding a logo image. It should have a class login screen logo. We specify the source and the alt attribute. Then we go to the SAS file and add the styling for the logo. We want to give it a width of 120 pixels and a bottom margin of 1 RAM. We press save and there it is, the logo is displayed on the page. As we want to have it in the middle, we have to add the display flex to the surrounding container. We align items and justify content set to center. The direction should be column as well. Now it looks better. As we'll be using the flex at several places during this course, I want to create a reusable mix-in first. So let's go to the helpers file and define a flex helper here. We want to add a couple of properties for the mixing. The one for direction, for align items and justify content. By default it should have a display of flex and we should assign whatever was set by the individual properties in the component SAS file. We go back to our SAS and just comment out the four lines here and include our mixin. We need to import the helpers but in order for this to work we need to add a little assistance to the angular.json and specify the paths to be included. And in our case it is assets slash styles. If we haven't done this, we would be forced to write a relative path to the helpers. We need to restart the server now and if we go back to the browser, everything still looks the same. Now let's add another helper for the background image. We add a mixing called BG image. We add a couple of properties like URL, position, and size. And we get rid of these four lines. So we can include the BG image mix in here. Everything looks the same, but the SAS looks way much cleaner now. We continue by adding a heading that will represent a user name. We go to SAS and add the color and the text shadow here. We hit save and we can see the username below the logo. But the font doesn't look good, so let's change that. The font that we're gonna be using is Yantramana. We just copy and paste the link from Google Fonts and we go to the base SCSS and add a font family to the body tag. Now the username looks better. The link to the Google Font is in the video description. Next, we'll add a container for our input field. We'll also use a class P input icon write from the prime and G theme. 
This allows us to have an input field with an icon on the right. The icon is circle right. Before we add the input to our HTML, we need to import the input text module into our shared UI module first. Now we can use it in the template. We begin with an input tag, the type should be password and we add a template reference. And we only show the icon when the password actually has the value. Then we want it to autofocus and finally we add a p input text directive from Prime and G. We also add a p input text SM class to make the input smaller by default. Then we go to the SAS and add a ng deep first so we can override the Prime and G input styles. This could have been done with a plain input tag, but I wanted to use the prime and g input because this is our primary UI library in this project. We give it a transparent background, reset the outline and the border, a border radius is 25 pixels and then the color and the padding. We take care of the placeholder and its color. And finally, we alternate the behavior on hover and enable focus. We save it and it looks cool already. Now we want to add a so-called password hint. So we open the template file and add this short text here. The styles are rather simple, we just make it a bit smaller than the, than the regular text. We make it centered and give it a little text shadow. Okay, we need to change its color and separate it from the input a little bit. Let's change that. We add the color to the surrounding container. and a bottom margin to the input div. The last part is adding the machine controls at the bottom of the screen. We create a new component with the Angular Files extension. Delete a test file, then move to the core module and define it here. We go to the login template and include this new component here. It should be relatively positioned comparing to the container, so we have to add position relative to the container. And then set the position absolute to the newly created div. It should be 40 pixels away from the bottom of the screen. We save and in the browser we can already see this new component rendered at the bottom. Next, we start building the machine controls template. This will be a container with a display of flags and the items are combinations of an icon and a small text below. We add a shutdown, restart and sleep controls. The icons are coming from the Prime Icons library that we installed in the second video of the series. The biggest job is to style the icons, so we do it here as we are setting the color, font size, a little bottom margin, and so on. In the end, we make the text below a little smaller, and that's how you can create a macOS-like login screen in Angular with Prime and G. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're gonna start building a desktop component. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching.